In the previous pivot table example, we treated both variables, attendance to a tasting room and preference for hoppy beers as nominal or categorical variables. But what if we wanted re to report the average score on hoppy preference? In other words, treat the Likert scale questions as the interval level data it came in as. We can still do that with pivot tables. This time, we're going to make a new pivot table, but we're going to start with the values tab of our data set, since we're going to actually need the code values of 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 to calculate a proper average. Once we do that, we're going to drag these different settings into our pivot table settings. Notice that here, rather than a count, I'm actually going to grab the average. I have to adjust this to get the beer pref hoppiness. And notice I'm also going to have to set that same beer pref hoppy variable into my filters. That's because there's some people who said they don't know the answer to this hoppiness question, and those values were coded negative 999. I don't want those negative 999 values to be in my calculations when I'm trying to calcul calculate an average to a 1 to 5 point Likert scale. And once we set that in the filter there, we'll be able to adjust that quite easily in our pivot table itself in the Excel spreadsheet. And we'll get a baseline result like this, which we'll then clean up. So let's go hop into Excel and actually demonstrate this. Now starting from the values uh, part of the data set, I have a, yet another new sheet available and I can build out my pivot table from there. And what I do this time is I again take the tourism tasting one, put it in columns. Notice there are no, no longer labels here because we're working from the values data set. So that's a little frustrating. We'll have to probably clean that up later. We take the beer pref hobby, hobby drag it into values, but we don't want the sum. We want the average, so we click here and just go to value field settings. We have the option for an average and other approaches as well, but the average is what we're seeking. And right away we notice that some of the average scores here are in the negative 100 zone or negative 9. That doesn't make any sense for a 1 to 5 scale, and that's because for the beer pref hoppy there were some I don't know responses, and those were coded as negative 999. We need to exclude those values so that our average value makes sense. So we bring that into the filters here. And once it's in the filter, we can go to beer pref hoppy and the filter icon selector here, select multiple items, and we just don't want the negative 999s included. And there we go. And we'll talk next about how this is formatted and how we might interpret it and how we might improve upon this if we wanted to actually include this in a report. Now clearly, this table is reporting the right results, but it's going to need a little bit of tidying up if we're going to actually consider reporting this uh, in a proper report. Here's an improvement. Once I had all the data correct in my pivot table, I actually copy and pasted the results elsewhere into my Excel spreadsheet, which I'm not going to show in this video. I'll leave that to you to do. From there, I reorganize the columns so that has visiting and tasting rooms on the far left, and they're organized in a more coherent way left to right. I added more constructive labels to the columns in rows so a reader who's not as familiar with my data set as I am would have an easier time interpreting and understanding this result. I also reduced the presentation of decimals. On a five point Likert scale, a single decimal point, maybe a second decimal point, is more than enough. We don't need to go out to the original seven or eight decimal points. Now there's actually a, a really important reporting decision to make here. Both of the pivot tables that I demonstrated to you in this video are correct. One shows the percentage approach, kind of a kind of a approaching a two box score approach. And the one that you see here in front of you is showing the average score. Which one would we probably include in our final report? Now, neither is wrong, but I think this table that we're looking at here is probably much less informative for craft beer business owners than the previous table we looked at. Now, why is that? Now again, I don't have a manager to directly talk to to know for sure how they interpret this, but using my expertise and familiarity with these types of things, I noticed here that the has visiting a tasting room group, the average score was 3.2 on the hoppy beer preference scale. Now, if someone said, what does that average mean on a three point scale? I'd say, well, that average is very close to neither agreeing nor disagreeing. That might lead the individual who's reading this report to conclude that most people don't really have a preference for hoppy beers, but that's not the case. Remember, 
In the previous table, we saw that about 44% of all the people who have been to a tasting room for craft breweries actually said they agreed or strongly agreed that they prefer hoppy beers. That's a lot of people. Uh, a craft beer marketer would definitely want to make sure, at least in San Diego, that they have very hoppy beers readily available on tap for their in-house uh, sales. These numbers here might inadvertently mislead the manager to think that that issue isn't as important. So that's why we have to think quite carefully about which one of these tables is most appropriate for the given context of our report. 